Amen. According to Healthline.com, the heart is the hardest working muscle in the human body. Now, some might say, well, for some folks, the tongue is the hardest working muscle. It could be, but really, according to studies, the heart is the hardest working muscle. A healthy heart pumps out two ounces of blood at every heartbeat. And every day it pumps at least 2,500 gallons of blood. Over the course of a person's lifetime, the heart has the ability to beat over 3 billion times. And there's a reason why when you go see your doctor, he or she comes walking in with a stethoscope around their neck. Because if they check only one thing while you are there, they're going to hear how your heart sounds. Because it, when the heart is not healthy, when the health of your heart begins to waver, then it's going to point to other health problems that either are happening or are soon to happen. Have you ever thought about what might be considered the hardest working spiritual muscle that a Christian has? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul lists three very important spiritual muscles that a Christian should make sure are healthy and strong. Verses 16 through 18 read, Rejoice always, pray constantly, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I guess if you were to think about it, the first spiritual muscle that might come to your mind as hardworking might be prayer. It's a hardworking muscle. It is such a vital muscle to maintaining our spiritual health that Paul wrote that we should pray constantly, pray always. The next spiritual muscle that might come to mind as hardworking might be rejoicing or showing great joy or delight in our life. In Christ, Paul wrote that we should keep our spiritual muscle rejoicing, healthy, by rejoicing always. The next spiritual muscle that you might come to your mind as hardworking might be giving thanks or showing gratitude to our Lord for the sacrifice that he made for us at Calvary and for the constant influence on our lives for good of the kingdom of God, and also for our own personal good, Paul wrote that we should keep our spiritual muscle thankfulness healthy. How? By giving thanks in everything. Amen. I've already told you that the hardest working muscle in the human body is, is the heart, and naturally, it is. But a person's heart, in addition to be the vital action of pumping blood, also represents another vital action in human beings' life. The heart is universally known as a symbol of love. A symbol of love. A symbol of showing love. And like the human heart works hard pumping blood. Sometimes a person's symbol of love, their heart, might have to work hard making sure that their human expression of love is strong enough. Now, you know what I'm talking about. I think I got a, a screen of a, there we go, yeah. The heart is the expression of love. Wednesday, a week ago, people all over the world celebrated Valentine's Day. DoGoNews.com wrote this about Valentine's Day. On February 14th, Americans will show their affection for family and friends with a gift or two. This display of love will not come cheap. The National Retail Federation estimates that consumers will spend a record $25.8 billion, an average of $185.81 per person on Valentine's Day in 2024. It is no wonder that U.S. retailers love the holiday. 
uh, by show of hands, who did not spend $185.81 on flowers and candies and cards this year? Me. <laughs> well, it's interesting you say that because Patty and I's 42nd wedding anniversary was on the 12th, and for a combined, combined Valentine anniversary present, I did spend $160 on something that she wanted. I bought her a table saw. You should have seen her eyes light up when she saw her new table saw. The truth is, she might have lit something up in me if I had spent $185.81 on Valentine's flowers and candies and cards. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, de I, he I debated whether to say this. I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> I know, it's probably wise counsel. If after we get this thing going, you get a text that says, please pray for Patty. She's cut her right index finger off, and we're going to the hospital to see if they can sew it back on. It does have some safety features. <laughs> some do spend that kind of money on Valentine's Day working hard to exercise their heart, the symbolic symbol of their love, and that's okay. Someone has to keep the greeting card industry alive. Just won't be me. The human heart Man's symbolic symbol of love, in addition to being the hardest working natural muscle, probably can also be awarded the medal for the hardest working human emotion symbol. You agree with that? And I present to you today that even though rejoicing always and praying constantly and giving thanks in everything are hard working spiritual muscles, a Christian's spiritual heart is the hardest working spiritual muscle. In Mark chapter 12, a scribe asked Jesus a question, which command is the most important of all? Now, of course, this scribe was referring to the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses, which are the cornerstone of the Jewish belief. The scribe knew that a Jew should not really place more emphasis on one commandment over another. So clearly what the scribe was, seemed to be doing was trying to catch Jesus in a situation where his answer might cause controversy and create more trouble for the Lord. But notice how Jesus answered the question without hesitation, verses 30 and 31, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater command, there is no other command greater than these. I'm talking about how that the spiritual heart is the hardest working spiritual muscle. Notice how the scribe responded, verse number 32. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have correctly said that he is one and there is none else except him. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is far more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to question him any longer. If you look at the 10 commandments, there is not one of them that refers to any type of burnt offering and sacrifices, not one. And I present to you that in this one exchange that the scribe had with Jesus, there was set forth that the spiritual heart of man is where the spiritual power lies, not only to be pleasing to God, but also to fulfill every command that God gave us that God gave for the church to follow. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. I'm talking about the spiritual heart today, a Christian's hardest 
working muscle. According to the C CDC in 2021, one in every five deaths in the United States was a result of heart disease. Proverbs 4 and 23 reads, guard your heart above all else, for it is a source of life. In order for our flesh and blood man to live long and prosper, did you notice that Star Trek reference there? In order for our flesh and blood man to live long and prosper, we must, we must be concerned about and work toward maintaining a healthy heart. Our natural life depends on it. But my message today is not about the heart being man's hardest working natural muscle. It's about a Christian's spiritual heart, and it is the responsibility of every child of God to keep our hard working spiritual heart as healthy as we can. Your spiritual heart, my brother and my sister, is more than just your personal gauge of how much you love the Lord. Jesus was teaching in Luke chapter 6 when he said this, a good person produces good out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil person produces evil out of the evil stored up in his heart, for his mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. Mark 7, verses 21 through 23, Jesus said, For from within out of people's hearts come evil thoughts, sexual immoralities, thefts, murders, adulteries, greed, evil actions, deceit, self-indulgence, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The condition of your spiritual heart is your personal gauge of how much you love the Lord, but it is also a witness to the world around you of what God is to you and what God has done for you. A Christian might be able to conceal from the world around them the real condition of their spiritual heart for a little while, but the truth is that Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 7 is probably not going to be one that we're going to create a needlepoint project out of and hang it on our wall. Paul wrote, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, he will also reap. A Christian who does not maintain a healthy spiritual heart by obeying God, obeying all his commands and directions to his children may not show their spiritual heart disease at first. But look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 gives undeniable proof of what happens when the spiritual heart health is not maintained. Notice this, don't you yourselves know that you are God's temple and that the Spirit of God lives in you. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and that is what you are. Hear me when I tell you that a spiritual heart, a healthy spiritual heart, is the dwelling place of God. And when a Christian does not maintain a healthy spiritual heart, then they, in essence, serve God with an eviction notice telling him that he is not welcome in their life. Let that sink in for a minute. I call the spiritual heart of Christians hardest working spiritual muscle because it is the place that does the heavy spiritual lifting in our lives. Luke chapter 8 contains what has been called the parable of the sower. In the story, a planter sows their seed into four types of soil. The first was by the wayside, and it was trampled on, and the birds ate it, so no crop was produced. The second was on a rock, and as soon as it had sprung up, it died because it had no water, so no crop was produced. The third was a thorny patch, and the thorns grew up with the good seed and choked out the good seed, so no crop was produced. In three out of four places where seed was planted, there is no mention 
of it being planted in man's hardest working spiritual muscle. But notice in verse number 15, Jesus talked about the fourth place where seed can be planted. But the seed in the good ground, these are the ones who having heard the word with an honest and good heart, hold on to it by enduring produce fruit. Not only does maintaining a healthy spiritual heart keep a, a child of God walking in their own Christian walk, but Jesus said that the only way to produce spiritual fruit, both personally and for the kingdom of God, is to sow seed in and with a spiritually healthy heart. Then, a spiritual crop can be produced using a Christian's hardest working spiritual muscle, their spiritual heart. Amen. Solomon wrote in Proverbs 27 and 9, as water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the person. I feel like I need to read that one more time. As water reflects the face, so the heart reflects the person. Wednesday, a week ago, billions of dollars were invested by men and women and young people with the goal being to impress upon someone their true feelings of their heart. Someone give me a piano. A little more than 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the pure, spotless Lamb of God, hung on a cross. And let me tell you what the goal was. The goal was to give you and I a chance to replace all of the sin and ugliness in our heart with his love and with his mercy. Paul wrote in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. In this natural life, the way to get help if you have heart disease in your flesh and blood heart is to go see a heart doctor. And if you do, then you're probably making yourself, your chances better to make that heart better. If your spiritual heart is showing some disease today, then Jesus gave us the action that we should take to cure our spiritual heart disease. Matthew wrote in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I am lowly and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Spiritual heart disease, hear me when I tell you, spiritual heart disease cannot be healed by anything that flesh and blood man could do. Spiritual heart disease cannot be healed by a good choir. Spiritual heart disease cannot be healed by a famous singer. Spiritual heart disease cannot be healed by a human teacher. Spiritual heart disease cannot be healed by a human pastor. The only way that the spiritual heart disease can be healed is by bringing that diseased spiritual heart to the Lord and by allowing him through his love and through his mercy to forgive you of your sins and rejuvenate and renew and restore your spiritual heart and give you the rest that you so desperately need and that the Lord promised to give to you. I've been talking about a Christian's hardest work in spiritual muscle today. It's your spiritual heart. And it can do all of the spiritual heavy lifting in your life, but only if you keep it healthy. I want a spiritually healthy heart, don't you? 
Amen. I don't want my spiritual heart disease to destroy my walk with God. I want my spiritual heart to be healthy and strong so that I can have a walk with God that is pleasing to Him. I want my spiritual heart to be healthy and strong so that others will see in me the type of Christian that they want to be. I want a spiritual healthy heart, don't you? Let's all stand right now and worship the Lord. Let's all stand and worship the Lord. I want a spiritual healthy heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My brother, my sister, if your spiritual heart is showing signs of disease today and you want God to rejuvenate it and renew it and restore it, then why don't you come to this front and let God do what Paul wrote about? He said, let God sprinkle your spiritual heart clean with his grace and with his mercy and with his forgiveness. You and I need to. We must do whatever it takes to maintain a healthy spirit spiritual heart our souls and the work of God's kingdom on this earth depends on it your hardest working spiritual muscle is your spiritual heart is yours healthy today let's all come to the front and spend a minute or so in prayer come on